Hi everyone, my name is James Feeney. Welcome to or back to my channel. Today I thought I would offer an updated journaling video. I've done at least two of these before in the past, if not three. I'll have all of my prior journaling videos linked below. Really what I am going through here is my personal journaling practice, my tips, tricks, techniques, where I'm currently at and what I'm using my journaling for, how I am journaling and in what ways I'm journaling, what about, and different prompts or tools I might be using. So I hope that this can offer some inspiration for anybody out there looking for it. If you are a fellow journaler and looking for something new to spice up your journaling practice, this might help. If you are new to journaling or looking to get into it and don't really know where to start, I also think this can help. And if you are somebody who's just curious about these things like I am, I enjoy watching journaling videos, then hopefully this can be fun and entertaining. Unlike prior journaling videos, I will disclaim that I'm not going to be showing any physical, the physical copy of my journal. I'm not going to be showing concrete examples just because my current journaling practice is so personal and there are so many names and details and emotions written out very clearly that I haven't been able to pick out or discern any examples that I feel comfortable sharing. Whereas I know in my prior journaling videos, I was able to sift out a few examples for the sake of showing what it is that I was doing. So I'll do my best to be very descriptive about what I do and still keep this interesting, although I am not going to be physically showing my entries in my journal. So before we fully dive into that, I know that I've been a bit absent from YouTube if you're watching this at the time of upload or if you're somebody who has watched my videos before, I've been gone for a bit. I thought that this would be a great way to dive back in. I do plan on having a bit of an update, catch up sort of video coming out soon, but I don't wanna to spend too much time on this video doing that. But if you are curious and you're looking to see, you know, where I'm at, what I've been up to, that'll be coming out soon for anybody who is curious. And there are a few things still up in the air that I want to solidify a bit more before I feel comfortable talking about them. So without further ado, I've just finished this journal. I've completed it, reached the end. I believe I've shown this journal before. It may have been the journal I was using in my prior journaling video where I was doing a bit of a doodle or a sketch for all of my journal entries. I tend to use my journals as a place for my thoughts, my reflections, my meditations, and also for my daily card pulls or my daily card draws. So this is more of a daily journal for me, although I will sometimes go in with more extemporaneous bits. I don't feel limited by what I'm using a journal for. I don't have to necessarily give it one concrete purpose and just allow it to fulfill that. To me, that's limiting. For me, journaling is something that I want to be exciting. If it's something that feels like a chore for you, and if that gets to be the case for me, that's when I know it's time to switch things up because if it's more of an obligation than it is something that you find is a tool that's useful, that's helpful for you, something that you look forward to doing or that you find use in doing, then you're less likely to keep up with it. And as somebody who has struggled on my own journaling, path and my daily journals, I need to keep it exciting. I need to keep it fun and it needs to be serving me and something that I feel refreshed by, something that I feel is offering me something back. I like results. I'm very re results oriented. And if my daily journaling practice is showing or giving some form of results to me in my daily life in the way that I feel, my mood, my productivity, whatever my goals at the time may be, then I know that the journaling practice is useful, or at least that's how I measure the use, the usefulness of the journaling practice itself. So I finished this journal. Generally, it's nice to switch up the way I journal when I transfer to a new one. I started to change things up just because this was stagnating, the idea of doing a little doodle for my daily card poll. I was kind of forcing myself to write about what I predicted through the cards. I was doing a tarot card and a playing card poll every day and then trying to write what I thought might occur during my day. If I knew what was happening, I might give a little bit on that, but it wasn't personal enough. And in my former journals, I have at some points been so detached personally from it that the journal practice, the journaling practice itself was more just a meditation or an observation on the cards and more of a reflection of my 
occult esoteric studies than it was of my own personal life. I would occasionally put in card spreads that I designed or spells and incantations and various things I wanted to record in regards to my spiritual or magical practice, which is still something I do, but I wasn't as personal. I didn't write down my experiences, my thoughts, my feelings, and that's something that's probably been the biggest change of late. I've decided to retire the idea of doing doodles in my journal recently. It just wasn't coming naturally to me, and for a time, the visual aspect was something that I felt enriched my journaling practice, and then as it started to go on, the drawings, the illustrations became smaller, they became more forced, I didn't really, nothing was coming naturally to me in terms of needing to draw something, and so I knew it was time to transition that aspect of it out. So the current journal I'm working with is this leather hardbound journal. I actually got this when I was visiting my sister in Italy a few years ago, and I'd been saving it for a special occasion so to speak, and something that I am trying to do more is to use the nice things in my life, for example, clothing, decks, materials, items, this journal, you know, if, if I'm always waiting for the right time or a special occasion to use something nice in my life, I might barely ever end up using it, if ever using it. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. I might as well take advantage of and enjoy all of the nice quality items that I like to invest in rather than letting them gather dust on a shelf. So, I like to use all of my, my decks, even the rare ones, even the out of print ones, the vintage ones that I love so much. If I'm not using them, then what's the point? So needless to say, that's why I'm using this journal and why I've decided to start to use it. I'm actually writing in it upside down as I realized after the first couple entries where the bookmark is, is, oh wait, did I do this right? No, yeah. I'm writing in it upside down and it seems pretty fitting actually that that should be the case. I'm trying to be a lot less stringent and strict with myself and less critical. For example, I write with a pen and I used to feel so much pressure and weight and it would make me hesitant to write certain things because I didn't want to scribble things out. I wondered if I should leave something out, if I should cross it out. Realistically, this is a personal journal. It's a daily journal. And if there's one place in life where I should not have to censor myself or redact anything or cross it out or feel embarrassed or critical of my errors, it should be in here. I should be able to make all of those mistakes to say everything I want, regardless of how controversial it may be or tenuous or wild or whatever the case may be. I should be able to say it all in here. And so writing in pen to me is important because I have to stick with what I've done. I can't erase it. I can't take it back. And I've decided that I also just will never cross anything out. I will leave all of my grammatical errors. I will leave all of the statements that I feel unsure of because that's still a reflection of me. And that is, to me, a very therapeutic and cathartic process in and of itself is to use a pen and to not censor myself and to not allow myself to take anything back. Everything that I put into this is what I was feeling in a given moment and it's valid, it's worthy, and it should stay. So the pen that I've been using lately in my journals has been the Muji. I just see all these really fancy journalers and journaling videos on YouTube where people are using Muji pens. So I did give in to the hype. I got myself a pack and this is the, it's, a, it's black and the width is 0 0.38. I don't know if you can see that or if it'll focus, probably not, um, but it's the 0 0.38 width. So it's very narrow and I've been writing a lot smaller lately, especially because this journal's not lined and I do want to take my time and I want to be able to fill it with a lot as opposed to writing very largely and getting through it quickly. This is a nice journal. It was expensive and I'm enjoying the process of using it and I don't want to, you know, be only be able to fit a few lines on one page. The fact that it doesn't have lines means I have to write a little bit more intentionally and pay attention to the structuring of my words because it's not a structure that's been laid out before me. I've used and found merit and worth in a lot of different structures of journal. I, for a while, really enjoyed dot journals because the lines were not as rigid and it was good for drawing or creating charts and doing other sorts of things. My prior journal, the one that I was just showing, does have lines in it and the lines were a little bit too thick and it wasn't i was trying to use the journal and it is a really nice journal and it was a gift so yeah there's that but i like that this one is just blank pages they're sort of like thick um off-white color really nice um and i'm enjoying that 
aspect. And of course it's black, which I enjoy. You want a journal that's aesthetically pleasing to you that all of the aspects of it entice you. For me, that's how I keep myself engaged in the journal is I need to like every part of the process. I need to like the journal itself. All of that feeds into me getting a lot out of the process. And even on days when it's difficult, if all if I have all of these other factors at play that keep me going, uh, on the hard days, I'm still going to journal just as much as I am on the easy days. Something that I found very useful for you know, you might be sitting there if you're like me and wondering, what do I write? What should I talk about? Um, and a big thing for me in getting started was that I felt like I had so much that had already happened in my life. Was I supposed to catch this journal up on who I am, what's happened, the context or background for any scenario, feeling or memory that I have? And I had to let that go. I've lived, all of us have lived such lives where, you know, we can't put everything that's already happened before we start the journal into the journal. And so I had to throw that out the window. I'm not Harriet the Spy. I just rewatched that video where she writes everything down and she has been since she was quite young, where you have that history, that log, that, you know, record of everything. It's just not possible. But in terms of having prompts and having a going off point to start writing, I've actually been loving this Journaling the Tarot, a little book of big questions by Andy Matzner. I've shown some of Andy Matner Matner's Matt, Matzner, Matzner, Andy Matzner. I've shown some of Andy's work in past videos. I'll try to link them below or link them around for various exercises. Andy has wonderful books out there for tarot journaling, tarot exercises, investigating the tarot, working hands-on with the cards in a way that goes, I would say, almost supersedes divination. So if you're looking for tarot exercises to enrich your studies and practice, Highly recommend. And then this one is great for, of course, tarot journaling. I know there's another book on tarot journaling as well. But with this one, there is there are prompts for every single card. So you'll get two pages for each card, majors and minors. And all these bullet points are pointed questions that pertain to the general theme of the card. So for example, we have the Ace of Swords. And the first bullet point or question says, what is on your mind? What, if anything, do you need uh, do you need to do about it? So of course, something being on your mind, an idea, all of that is going to connect to the theme or the idea of the Ace of Swords. We have other questions with the Ace of Swords, like what isn't adding up? Who will you champion uh, and why? What questions should you be asking? Five of Cups. Uh, what is awaiting your attention? What still needs to be resolved? And these are all vague, but great places to start. One, I feel like I'm connecting to the card a bit more, so maybe I'll start by writing a little prediction about the combination of the tarot and playing card that I've drawn, just in the general gist of the theme that I'm getting from the combination of the two, and then I'll write down the question that I pick about the card. These tend to be more reflective of the Rider-Waite-Smith system in the way that it seems the cards have been perceived and the questions being asked. It just I get that feeling from it. I do not usually use the Rider Waite Smith when it comes to my daily draws. In fact, I fluctuate between using some version of a Marseille and the Toth deck, which you all may know if you've watched my videos, but I just have this one with me. So I'll pull one of these and but I still use the questions. I feel I still think the questions are valid and that they apply across the systems. I like to think that I can mix and match and go across these systems and I don't have to necessarily adhere to the traditions or thinkings, teachings that are associated with any of those given major modern systems that I like to think of, Rider Waite Smith, Toth, and Marseille. And then for playing cards, I'll usually either use the Pagan playing cards by Usi, but lately I've been using the, what is this again? It's the Hermes. The Hermes Playing Cards by Robert M. Place. They look like this. So they do have a little symbol on all of the cards, which can be really fun and helpful and informative as far as imagery goes. I tend to like lesser Im imagery or lesser illustrated cards for myself personally. So pip decks and playing card decks that are, yes, less illustrated, but these are great. So I've really been enjoying them and that's how I do that. So. I'll answer this, and usually this will be a springboard, and I'll start talking about various areas of my life. 
I will answer the question in multiple ways from multiple different angles. Sometimes it turns into a three page long journaling rant that, you know, the question was answered on the first page, but really the ideas and topics and feelings that came up, I felt the need to expand upon them, to question myself, to unravel a thread or kind of pull the thread and let the thing come loose. And generally, there's a spiritual aspect, there is a metaphysical aspect, but there's also lately a highly emotional aspect. How is this thing making me feel? Who are these people in my lives? I used to refrain from mentioning names, specific scenarios, and things that I found personally embarrassing that I almost did not want to admit to myself. I had this, I was almost writing as if I was scared that somebody would one day pick up my journal and that there would be an issue with that. One, I don't think anybody cares that much about me to care so much about what's in my journal. And say I were to drop dead today and somebody found my journals, there are worse things than all of what I had to say coming to light than, and I'd be dead at that point anyway, so who cares? So I'm, I'm tired of being embarrassed or thinking, I guess censoring myself or uh, constraining myself, limiting myself for the sake of appearances or... Um, potential embarrassment. It's my journal. It's my personal journal of all things. So it's the one place I really am supposed to be completely myself to speak as openly, as candidly, as frankly as possible. I could have opinions and things that I would be super embarrassed or would never say to a person's face and I can put them in the journal. I can put all of the juicy details. I can be explicit. I can have conflicting viewpoints and write both of them down. Uh, and I found that to be really helpful for myself. I do include, I make this, this is more of a hybrid journal now, so I'm writing in it every day, but I'm also including any tarot spreads that I've done or readings that I find to be major for myself personally. I'm including any rituals or thoughts in regards to my own magical practice, whether it's just offhanded or if it's something a little bit more structured that I want to remember and document for the sake of understanding if it was the, the efficacy of say a ritual or a spell or just to be able to look back on it to know that that's something that I did and that it was important to me in that moment. Uh, all of that gets included in this journal. I'm trying to just consolidate down to one rather than having multiple journals. I started to find that that was more overwhelming and I was like which one do I put this in sometimes if something felt like it kind of fell into two categories and so just having one journal, and even if that means I use up that journal more quickly because I'm using it for everything, so be it. It's just easier to have everything all in one place for myself, at least, and I don't find that to be chaotic or anything like that, or at least I'm okay with the chaos that comes of something like that. Uh, I may come across quite put together sometimes on camera, but I would not consider myself a very put together person at large or by and large. So I think that that about sums it up. I guess I would just say I've also tried to incorporate some of my other facets and interests in life into the journal. And uh, one book that has been inspiring me, because I'm always using books as inspiration in my magical practice and my spiritual practice to inform the decisions I make and the way I look at life. And I'm quite the, the fictional novel reader, as some of you may know. One that's really been inspiring my journaling practice, and I'm still in the middle of it, so... Uh, but it's Piranesi by Susanna Clark. I know this one has rave reviews and is all over the booktube uh, facet of or a sector of YouTube that I've been very into lately for my book recommendations and just hearing what others have to say on some books. The protagonist in this one keeps very studious, meticulous journals and entries and a record of their lived experience and the way that this protagonist communicates and observes life is extremely fascinating to me and so I've toyed around with some of the writing style and ways of documenting my life that are in some ways similar or inspired by this novel. So if I had one tip for you it would be to look to your creative muses if you're inspired by certain TV shows, media, entertainment, novels, and books and those make you want to go about journaling in a certain way, go for it. If you're writing it as if you are a protagonist in a story and you'd rather write your own lived experience as if it were a novel or a story, awesome, go for it. If you find something super fun and creative about poems and metaphors and you want to 
basically tell your story or get your feelings out in a way that is not at all literal and very creative and fluid, go for that as well. And there's no reason why you can't switch it up from one day to the next. Sometimes I do like to write little poems or just little almost riddles, imagining that it would be fun if somebody did pick up my journal at some point and they would have to decode or use context clues to try to see what that riddle might be. I don't necessarily write in my journal with the thought that it is going to be read by somebody, but I do keep in mind that that could be, it could be, and there's nothing wrong with that and I wouldn't have an issue with that. So that being what it is, I think that's all about all that I have to say on journaling at the moment. I hope that at the very least this was entertaining for anybody watching. If you were looking for inspiration or ideas or just something to freshen up your own journaling practice, that this is, you got something from this, that you can take something away from this. Likewise, I would be very welcome to suggestions in the comments or just little anecdotes from you and your journaling practice and tips, tricks, and things that you've done, what you're finding to be really useful and effective and, and great for your journaling at the moment. I hope you are all well. Like and subscribe if this was fun and interesting. And until next time, bye.